Hello, this is Mark Tooley, president of the Institute on Religion and Democracy here in Washington, DC, with the pleasure today of talking with Ryan Burge. I hope I'm pronouncing your last name correctly. You uh, got it, yep. Ryan, author of a new book that is uh, very relevant to today's conversations about religion in America. The book is called The Nuns, where they came from, who they are, and where are they going, obviously referring to the growing demographic in America of those who profess to have no formal religious affiliation. They are much discussed, the nuns, maybe misunderstood in terms of who they are and what are what they don't believe, uh, but they are a growing element in American society. So Ryan is going to explain what they're all about. So Ryan, what uh, persuaded you to write this book? Well, it, it was a tweet, really, that, that kind of got the book all all started. I, I was I was a guy who had like 500 Twitter followers. And one day I sent out this tweet from the general social survey data that said that the nuns are um, as large as evangelicals or Catholics, and they're continuing to grow very rapidly. And that tweet, for reasons I don't fully understand, even to this day, went viral. And it got retweeted over a thousand times. And all of a sudden, people from you know, the CNN, the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, the Times of London. I mean, people all over the world were calling me wanting to talk about the nuns. And so I thought, you know, if I'm going to write a book, I might as well write a book about something that people already care about and kind of what I've known for. And there was just, you know, there's just this latent desire to understand how American society is changing. Everyone kind of knows that we're becoming less religious, but no one's ever been really to sort of be able to quantify and kind of explain it in a meaningful way. So I mean, the book was my attempt to, to kind of translate all the data that I know to a lay audience who is interested and engaged, but maybe doesn't really want to dig into, you know, a big academic text. So I wanted to kind of go to that that middle audience, that trade level kind of academic level audience. And uh, that's where the nuns came from. And uh, where do you teach and what is your background? So um, I'm an assistant professor of political science at Eastern Illinois University in Charleston, Illinois. Um, I have a PhD in political science from SIU Carbondale. Got that in 2011. Um, I'm also a pastor. Uh, I've been the, a pastor in the American Baptist churches uh, for almost 20 years now. I serve my current church, First Baptist Church of Mount Vernon, Illinois. I've been the pastor there for uh, over 15 years now, the longest serving pastor in the history of the church. So um, I study religion and politics, generally speaking. So I kind of take both sides of my life and kind of mix and match it together. I remember when I was 17 years old, one of my one of my teachers in high school was like, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, I want to be a lawyer and a youth pastor. And she laughed, you know, saying like, that's kind of an impossible thing. And I, I saw her a couple of years ago and I was like, well, I, I mean, I kind of got it right. I'm in the same kind of ballpark on, on both aspects. So I'm bivocational in the pastorate because it's a very small church, about 15 or 20 people. And then I, uh, I teach full time. And uh, the nuns, who exactly are they? Uh, people assume they're overwhelmingly secular, but many of them are self-identified as spiritual. Some of them attend places of worship uh, regularly. Yeah. So if you, so the nuns are about thirty percent of America. Different polls put them a different number, anywhere between twenty-seven and thirty-four percent. But I think thirty percent is kind of the right number. Um, so if you put five nuns in a room, one's an atheist. One's an agnostic, and three are a group called Nothing in Particular. And that's really the group I wanted to kind of zero in on in the book and talk about a lot more is the fact that 60% of the nuns are nothing in particular. And they look are completely different than atheists or agnostics on all kinds of other measures. For instance, only 21% of nothing in particulars have a four-year college degree. It's 47% of atheists and 44% of agnostics. So, you know, in terms of education, they're not even on the same planet. Um, nuns are at the very bottom and atheists and agnostics are near the top. Um, economically, 60% of nothing in particular is make $50,000 as a household per year or less, which means that most of these nuns live in poverty. Amongst atheists, only 40% make $50,000 or less, and 25% of atheists make more than $100,000 a year. So completely different worlds. Atheist agnostics do not go to church. Very, very, very rarely. 95% of them never go to church or seldom go to church. Uh, amongst nothing in particular, it's about 30% of them say they go at least once a year, if not more. So, you know, th there's a new book that came out called Secular Surge by Dave Campbell and Lehman and, and John Green out of Notre Dame. And they make this really interesting kind of comparison. They say that atheist agnostics are secular. They have a secular worldview, which means they're basically anti-religion. They don't like religion. They don't want any more religion in America. They want to fight against religion as much as possible. But then there's the non-religious. 
And the nothing particulars are non-religious because it's not like they're anti-religion, but they're not pro-religion either. When they hear the religion question, I think for most of them, they kind of shrug their shoulders and go, I'm not for that, but I'm not for that either. So they're not anti-religion. They're not, they're not turned off by faith. They just don't feel some sort of deep abiding connection to it and just don't want to affiliate with religion on surveys. The uh, stereotype about nuns is often that they're uh, urban educated uh, millennials, but it's much more complicated, you're saying. Oh, it's uh, you can't get to 30 percent of the population by being one thing. Right. You got to be everything now. So now it's old and young. It's it's black. It's white. It's Asian. It's Hispanic. It's every generation. It's every economic strata. And even increasingly now we're seeing more nuns are Republicans or conservatives, political conservatives, because they've kind of hit the hit the ceiling when it comes to drawing in liberals. Now, that's not to say that liberals are not more likely to be nuns. That's absolutely true. But we're seeing more and more. The nuns are becoming a politically diverse coalition, which actually kind of creates all these interesting problems for the future of American politics and religion about how the parties kind of, you know, navigate this changing world because the world looks completely different today than it did even 30 or 40 years ago when it comes to religion. To what extent does the rise of the nuns reflect increased secularization? And to what extent does it reflect the collapse of the Protestant denominations and the decline of institutional Christianity? I think it's, it's both. And so one thing that, um, I think most people don't realize is that the rise of non-denominational Protestant Christianity in this country is just unprecedented. Um, in, 2000, in 1972, about 3% of all Protestants were non-denominational, and now it's 25% of all Protestants are non-denominational. If you look back over the last 10 years, the only um, Protestant tradition that grew in size was non-denominational. Baptists are down, Methodists are down, Lutherans, Episcopalians, Presbyterians, all down over the last 10 years. The only one that has grown in size is non-denominationals. And, and one of the reasons that evangelicalism is still so robust in this country is because non-denominationals kind of picked up the slack that have been left behind by like the Southern Baptists, for instance, who lost 2.1 million members in the last 15 years. So I think that's part of it, is this non-denominational shift we're seeing in American Protestant Christianity. The other side is, you know, there's this whole theory that America was, was destined to be less religious because it became more economically prosperous and had higher levels of education. There's this old theory in sociology called secularization theory, which says that the more education you have, the less God you need. And, you know, the, the evidence of that is Western Europe. I mean, countries like Germany, only 8% of Germans go to church um, once a week. You know, it, and even in Italy, it's only 20%. So, you know, we were going to look more and more like Western Europe the interesting question is, why did it take so long and why has it gone so slowly? I mean, we should be if we were on the trend line, zero percent of Americans should say religion is very important. But instead, it's over 50 percent of Americans say religion is very important. So we're still much more religious than we should be comparing ourselves to Western Europe. Is it fair to say that many of these nuns are at least sporadically attending non-denominational churches, but don't really identify as anything specifically Christian? I think that's that's I think a lot of them are kind of we there's this category that kind of bops around academic literature called SBNR spiritual but not religious. And you see that in data. Like for instance, 37% of people say they're very spiritual, but only 21% of people say they're very religious. Because you know, religion has this negative connotation in, in American life. And I don't think it's just religion, by the way. I think it's all institutions have a negative connotation. We we reject labels. We don't want to be branded by anyone that we're anything this, that, or the other. So we're seeing more and more people say they're politically independent or politically moderate when they're really not. People say they're not religious when they actually do go to church. So like I mentioned before, 30% of nothing particular is go to church at least once a year. And if you look, and I think this is really kind of the for the church to think about, so there's this panel data where they asked people in 2010 and 2014 what their religion was. Same people, so you could track change at the individual level. Okay, amongst atheists, 99% of them were still nuns four years later. Okay, amongst agnostics, it was 96% were still nuns four years later. So very very little switching there. But amongst nothing in particulars, four years later, 16% of them were Christians and 8% of them moved to another faith tradition, whether it be Buddhist, Hindu, Muslim, Islam. So you're talking a quarter of nothing in particulars switch from being a nun to being a sum four years later. 
So they're not really that anti-religion. I think there's this term we use called liminal. They kind of move in and out of these spaces where it's they're, they're very, very religious and they're secular for a while. Then they kind of bounce back and forth, back and forth. That's what the nothing in particulars are. We almost always see when someone leaves religion, they don't go from being like an evangelical to an atheist. They kind of stop at that nothing in particular pathway on the way there and on the way back, by the way. There's very little data that says that atheists become, you know, evangelicals or Catholics. Almost always that that nothing in particular is sort of like a way station, like a transfer station between religion on one side and secularism on the other side. And most people pass through that that pathway. And I think that's really where the battle over American religion is being fought is in that nothing in particular group. And the numbers of uh, self-professed atheists and agnostics uh, have risen, but still relatively small. So is it accurate to say that America is becoming more secular or is it more accurate to say America is less institutionally religious? Yeah, I would say we're, we're much, we're less religious and slightly more secular. Right. So in, in 2008, about six or 7% of Americans said they were atheists or agnostics. Now it's 12%, which is, I mean, a rise, but you still got to think eight, 88% of Americans do not identify as atheists or agnostic. And even I, I posted the stat on my Twitter the other day, even amongst never attending people. So people who never attend church, you ask them how they believe about God. People are just as likely amongst that group. People are just as likely to say that God exists without any doubt as they are to say God does not exist. So even amongst like never attending people, there's still a lot of belief in this country. And I think that's something that is easily looked over when we think about religion. So when we think about religion, we think about it in three dimensions. There's behavior, which is like going to church. About 45% of Americans never go to church. Okay. Then there's belonging, which is like, I say, I'm not religious. I say I'm atheist. I say I'm agnostic. I say I'm nothing in particular. That share of Americans is about 30%. And then the last share is, what do you believe about God? Only about 10% of Americans say they don't believe in God or they have an agnostic view of God where he might exist, but they just can't tell for sure. So 40%, 30%, but only 10% of Americans say they don't believe in God at all. So there's only about 5 or 6% of Americans who don't believe, don't belong, and don't behave. So really the none, none, nuns of America is about 1 in 20 of us. We are still a deeply religious place, although I do think secularism is on the march because especially on social media, and you probably have seen this as well, atheist agnostics are very loud. They are very proud of their position. They, they actually like the opposition. There's actually data I just saw the other day that said that even when they're confronted with discrimination and anger for their beliefs, atheists actually dig in more because of that. So they're very, very reticent in what they believe. So things like empty the pews is a very like atheist, agnostic, secular idea. So they're a group that are small in number, but I think they're actually overrepresented on social media, and they're actually overrepresented in politics, too, because atheists are the most politically active religious group in America today. Even if you control for education, which some people like, oh, it's because they're, they're more educated, they're more active. Even if you control for education, they're still more active than evangelical Protestants are. In 2020, over 50% of atheists donated to a candidate or campaign, over 50%. It was only 22% of white evangelicals. So they're incredibly, they punch above their weight, atheists and agnostics do. So I think it's kind of like a, a thing where like their actual numbers aren't that large, but the perception of what they do is much larger because of how engaged and active they are in the political process and in the social media dialogue. So atheists and agnostics, obviously in their politics lean much farther to the left than the general population. Yeah. In terms of the religious nuns, they also are farther to the left than obviously religious Americans are, but to what extent? So atheist agnostics, agnostics are actually kind of a light version of atheists. So if like 80% of agnostics voted for Biden, it'd be 75%, or I'm sorry, if 80% of atheists voted for Biden, it'd be 75% of agnostics. So just slightly towards the center from atheists. Atheists are the most liberal religious group in America today. Even black Protestants don't call themselves liberal. More black Protestants call themselves moderate than liberal. Atheists are loud and proud about how liberal they are. I actually looked at this data that asked people to put themselves on a scale from one to seven, one being very liberal and seven being very conservative. They, they Atheists over the last four years actually see themselves trending to the left, like towards the very liberal side. And they actually see the Democratic Party moving towards the middle. They're the only religious group that, that said that. Most people saw the Democratic Party staying where it was or even moving a little bit to the left. Atheists are like, whoa, the Democrats are way too moderate for us now, and we've gone out to the edge. So they're actually like very liberal and very proud of it. Now, 
amongst your nothing in particulars, they are center left people. Okay. So they generally lean towards the Democrat 60, 40 in, a, in like a generic election. It, it varies though. So for instance, in 2016, they were only 55, 45, 55 for Clinton, 45 for Trump. And I think one reason is, is because they liked Trump because he was a guy like them who was the outsider. Like I represent, no, no one's representing you and I'm representing you and I'm going to shake Washington up because it's not working for you. And a lot of these nothing particulars are anti-institution, right? They think society's not working for them. They like outsiders. But what's interesting is, so they voted, they, you know, 55-45 in, in 2016, but then in 2020 comes around and it goes right back to the way it was before. The old, the old guard of 62-38 or 60-40, because I think they saw Trump, they thought he was going to be this rebel, right? This guy who was an outsider, drained the swamp, all that stuff. And then after four years in office, they realized he was just like everyone else, just like a politician, like everyone else. And so they went back to that normal configuration, which is they favored the, the Democrats about 60, 40. Um, and I think they're actually one of the most interesting, most consequential religious groups in America today, nothing in particular, because you got to think about 21% of Americans are nothing in particular. It's the same size as evangelicals. No one's talking about the nothing in particular vote, and everyone talks about the white evangelical vote. But if you can swing 5% of the nothing in particular as your direction, that can mean the difference in a swing state. Now, the term, the word evangelical has gone from being primarily theological to a, uh, a cultural or a political label such that even supposedly some Hindus and Muslims and Jews identify as evangelical because of their politics. What's going on there? Yeah. So this is something that makes everyone mad when I tell them there's, there's, there's Muslims who are evangelicals. There's Jews who are evangelicals. There are Catholics who are evangelical. Now about one in five Catholics says they're evangelical up from about 12% 10 years ago. And so there are a couple of things going on here. One is we're seeing more and more people grab onto the evangelical label who don't go to church at all, right? So the share of self-identified, that's a key word, self-identified evangelicals who go to church less than once a year is now 40%. It was 28% in 2008. So we're seeing a rapid rise in, in people grabbing onto the evangelical term, not because of the theology or the church behind it, but because of cultural and political ideas. Now, there's something else going on which is we're seeing, like we just talked about, the rise of born-again Muslims and born-again Jews and born-again Catholics. And, and, and if you look at the data, for a long time, everyone thought that was just survey error. People didn't know what they were doing when they clicked the button, and it's just they're, they're making mistakes. But if you look at the data, what you see is there's really two things that predict people pick, picking the born-again option, like Muslims, for instance. It's I go to, to mosque a lot, more than once a week, and I'm also a Republican. So what evangelical has become for non-Christians is a moniker that says I'm very religious and I'm conservative, politically conservative and theologically conservative. So now what we're seeing is this label sort of jumped the fence out of theology and become social, become political, become something bigger than all that stuff. And people are grabbing onto it. And then the old school evangelicals, like the, the traditional theological evangelicals, whoa, 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 that's not what we're about, but – at some point, you can't tell people what they are and what they aren't. You know, if they want to grab onto it, it's my job to try to figure out why they're grabbing onto it and how that label is kind of morphed and changed over time and now means something completely different than it did even 20 or 30 years ago. Perhaps it's too early to say, but the rising generation of Zs, will they be even more prone to be nuns than the millennials or what do you expect? So about 44% of millennials are nuns, and it's about 45% of Gen Z. Now, there's some caveats with that, in that Gen Z has not reached full flower yet. So the oldest members of Gen Z were born in 1996. So they're 25, 26 years old. We've still got a lot more Gen Z to go. Like a lot of them still have to come of age and become adults. And then the other part is the older Gen Z has to move into parenthood, getting married, and all the things that go along with that. So I think it's still too early to say, but I think the millennials and Gen Z are actually going to look a lot more, they have a lot more similarities when it comes to religion. Millennials were the first non-religious generation in American history. I wrote a piece about this for RNS. Gen X looks a lot lower like the baby boomers than they do like the millennials. Gen X is still very religious. Actually, the share of Gen X is God exists without any doubts has gone up over the last 20 years. So they're still very religious, very faithful. Millennials have really fallen off the table when it comes to religion, whether it be belief, behavior, or belonging, and they look a lot more like Gen Z now. Ryan Burge, author of The Nuns, where they came from, who they are, and where they are going. Thank you for a very interesting interview. Thanks, Mark.